I'm Mike Turner, Senior Industrial Designer with DG Design and I'm introducing a series of industry blogs focused on VRED usage within a live project environment. This particular series is focused on public transport, public transportation projects and in this episode I'm going to give you an industry insight into the work that DG Design ourselves do. Um, we're a UK-based design consultancy with an extensive background supporting public transport design projects. The company was founded by Dave Gordon in year 2000. We're transport design specialists, originally with a, a strong rail vehicle bias within the company. And although we're UK-based, we enjoy a global client base. We've currently got a team of four with a, a great depth of experience between us. And we're, as a team, we're regularly described as punching well above our weight in terms of the kind of work that we do and the kind of output we deliver. We support both concept and production work, looking at vehicle interiors and exteriors. And we get involved in all aspects of vehicle design, the styling, the ergonomics, the colour materials and finishes, the branding and the overall user experience and in terms of what we do I think you can always summarise it that we're quite end user focused. We work as a, the main project interface, we support both the manufacturing side of, of design but also looking at the operators and end users and we're often working behind the scenes in many cases. We've been Autodesk users for the most part. Uh, I think the company picked up Alias in about 2008 and have been active VRED users since 2015. Our work isn't often shown or, or discussed in detail due to client confidentiality reasons, but if you've travelled on UK Rail, there's, there's a fair chance you'll have experienced our, our output firsthand. Although much of our work still remains confidential, I'm able to share here some recent past examples to give you a flavour of, of what we do and to highlight how we use Autodesk software and in particular VRED to support our development process. So we can talk briefly about uh, TransPennine Express and the recent work we've done to support that operator, uh, introducing their new Nova fleets that serve the northwest of England. Uh, work to support them was already underway in 2016 when I first joined the company uh, and the new range of vehicles was actually launched to the public in 2019. On that project we supported two exterior designs uh, in entirety working with um, Spanish company CAF um, to support the vehicle design exterior from first sketch through to final production release. But on top of that, we got heavily involved to devise the exterior branding and look at signage to give wayfinding around the vehicle and around the exterior. On the interior, we oversaw detailed development of, of the main interior architecture. In particular, we were focused on the seat design itself, the centre of comfort for everyone travelling on the vehicle. But beyond this, we also looked at the interior colour materials and finishings. We looked at wayfinding signage and we work with the suppliers to refine and productionise the intent to see the vehicle through all the way to job one. But beyond this we were concerned with the customer interface looking at things from a, a passenger perspective. So we got involved in aspects of station design, looking at lobbies and cycle storage areas to really give a holistic approach so that the experience as a passenger from first you know, booking a ticket, arriving at the station, getting on the train was consistent and cohesive throughout the journey. We can talk briefly about the Zafiro, uh, their high-speed train that we've been supporting for Bombardier Transportation, which is now part of the Alston Group. We've provided ongoing support going back to um, early to 2008-2010. The original design, the exterior that we worked on, was launched in 2012. Um, and I was fortunate enough to work on this project later on um, to support the update work for the very high-speed train, which was revealed uh, to the shows in Germany in 2018. And again, on that project, we're involved heavily in the exterior design. Because it's a high-speed uh, product, we had to look in detail at the aer aerodynamics of the design, uh, get that absolutely balanced and work with the engineering teams to ensure that was optimised from a, a manufacturing feasibility perspective, looking at legislation, details to do with the exterior lighting and signage. And for that project in particular, we used VRED throughout. 
me talk about the art project, which was originally developed as a, a concept vehicle, looking at both the exterior and inter interior design for a sort of a, a light rail system. This project was uh, initiated before I joined DG Design and was originally visualised in 3ds Max, but more recently I've used that same data set to produce additional images in VRED to test and prove out ray tracing functionality and obviously provide an asset that we can talk about throughout this particular blog series. We can mention the Transport for London Strap Hanger project which is used in active service on the, the London Underground. Um, this is a sort of detailed piece of product design focused very much around practical constraints uh, and we oversaw the design from concept through to production. Um, we were involved in sort of ongoing digital and physical prototyping uh, throughout all stages of the project to validate the functionality of the design, to assess the ergonomics, the feel in the hand, and, and to ensure that the appearance looks um, absolutely spot on as well. That one, again, from start to finish, was, was modelled in Alias and visualised along the way in both Alias and VRED to um, assess the design and ensure it was, it was right prior to launch. Moving away from rail but still talking about public transport, we're still actually involved with a, a company called Noon who generate luxury MIDI and MIDI coaches. Uh, they're a manufacturer based in uh, Ireland. We support that team looking at exterior design and again working from initial concept through to production release across a series of Iveco and Mercedes platforms. We're working with their in-house engineering and manufacturing teams and the surfaces that we develop in Alias are ultimately used to mill the tools used to make the production body parts. But beyond the exteriors, we're actively involved in supporting the interior design. We've looked at the, the driver's area, the workstation, around the dashboard, looking at extra trim controls and storage features. We've supported work looking at passenger seating and general storage throughout the vehicle. Uh, and we provide ongoing interior design and CMF assessment in, in VRED. Um, we've used VRED with Noom for, for brochure imaging and for launch materials and launch assets. And we actually use VRED VR in Anger um, for the public launch of their new T500S, which was launched just before COVID got serious. Uh, I think it was about two, mid-2019 in the UK bus and coach show down at the NEC, which gave potential customers a chance to try out the design, see a number of different colourways. Uh, and get a first-hand feel for what that product was about before the design itself actually went live and before the tooling was finalised. Now, given the nature of what we do, there's, there's many, many more public transport projects that we can't talk about in detail. We'd be doing high-speed trains for China, we're looking at interiors and exteriors, we're doing interior design support to forthcoming UK rail projects, there's modular electric buses that we're working on for the European market, there's detailed interior design supporting a number of, of rail operators looking at seating, passenger space, toilets, vestibules, cycle storage areas. There's, there's a lot to go out with these projects. And our, our company continues to be actively involved and support public transport sector project in addition to the work we do supporting other product design areas, off-highway and bespoke automotive activities. We've certainly covered a lot of ground in the past 20 years. Um, and given the growing emphasis that in the public eye on electric and autonomous vehicle solutions, it's going to be very interesting to see what projects we'll be talking about 20 years from now. But anyway, thank you for listening to that introduction. I hope you found it interesting and informative and I look forward to seeing you guys on the next episode. Thanks very much.